I wanted to make a lifeline guide for so long now, but if we're honest, oh. Valkyrie is the absolute pillar in every team and she's just broken. But like good broken, not overpowered broken, but just really, really fucking good. And in today's gamer language, everything that's good is apparently broken. Not even the season 14 nerfs could dethrone her. You have no power here. I'm not addressing the absolute bronze casual beginners with this guide, but of course, also not the pros, preds or masters. First of all, because they probably don't need a guide. And second, I mean, 20 teams, 20 Valkyries speak for themselves. Even Gibraltar was only picked five times. What you want to do in casual pop stumping, we don't care. But if you want to play ranked seriously, then you need at least one Valk in the team. At least. I would love to get more into the lore here, but then this video would never end. Kyrie Valkyrie Imahara, Papa Pilot. Kyrie steals Titan. Papa has to save her. Papa not mad but disappointed. Papa dead. Kyrie sad. Kyrie Valk now. Valk goes to Apex Legends. Valk has sexy time with Loba. Bangalore loses in Love Triangle. Okay, let's go. Her passives, yes, plural, are broken. Her passives alone are probably better than a whole crypto. Before I get started, go into the settings and set toggle to hold. That way you only fly when you hold down your button. What can I tell you? In a game where high ground is absolutely key, you always have home advantage with her. You can always get high ground in every fight and reset. Jump down, do some damage, fly up, heal, rinse and repeat. Apex is a super hard game. In Warzone, you can kill a squad of four people with one magazine. In Fortnite, you can build and outplay them that way. But here in Apex, a 2v3 is already a very scary situation. And a 1v3 against a healthy 600 HP squad is already pretty much impossible. I'd say with Valk, you have the best chance to win a 1v3. Here's a video of a monkey bullying a tiger. Same energy. If you drop down, do some damage, then leave again, you'll be flying around like a fucking annoying mosquito. Jesus, nothing more annoying. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you to fly around a lot if you're low on health though, because that would be just like shooting clay pigeons for the enemy. 100% of all Valks are killed whilst being airborne. It's a fact. But for real, you're way faster if you spam flying lightly and stay close to the ground. But you'll empty your tank way faster that way, so keep an eye out. When you fly up onto something and land, you'll have this whole hands animation, including getting your weapon out, and you'll just stand completely open for a second. So try to fly at the edge in a way that you climb over the edge immediately. This way you skip the animation and don't expose your whole body. Now, all Legend except for Horizon have this full stun, which means that when you fall from a proper height and land, you hit the ground like a rock and you can't move for a second, making yourself vulnerable. Tap your jetpack just before landing for a soft landing. Try to soft land with Valkyrie as often as possible. Then we have her second passive, which allows you to mark all enemies within 250 meters when you first drop from the ship and or redeploy. So as a Valk, when you're in a location near a redeploy balloon, for example, you can always quickly go up and check the area for enemies while you glide down in a circle. Literally just a radar that covers 360 degrees. And then her third passive. She can, of course, scan the next zone as a recon legend. Look, we've been talking about her passive for a while now. Do you know what Pathfinder has for a passive, for instance? He can also mark the next zone. Okay, let's continue with the tactical, because I see this video is getting longer than it should, perhaps. You have a missile swarm. First missile does 25 damage, and from then on, each missile does only three. But the tactical is not there to get kills. It's just there to fuck people up and distract them. You slow down enemies with it like an arc star, but there's no better feeling than when a complete squad hides behind a rock, then you chase them out with the rockets and watch them run out into the open like rats leaving a sunken ship. Couple of things you'll want to keep in mind though here. You won't be able to shoot the rockets in enclosed spaces. Your crosshair will be centered on the closest missile to you, meaning you always want to shoot one or two meters in front of an opponent to hit as much area as possible. And last point, you can, even if it's a bit tricky, shoot the missiles behind you if someone is chasing you. Just run, jump, and when you're at the highest point of your jump, look down and shoot the rockets. Otherwise it won't work and you'll just shoot yourself. Practice this for a while in the firing range because it won't always work out 10 out of 10 times in game. And then the ultimate, you can shoot yourself and your team high into the sky and redeploy. 
And while you're up there, you'll be marking all the enemies around you so you can decide where you want to land, either on them or as far away as possible. It's your playstyle as you like, but you can make informed decisions. And a little tip here, use your skydive emote while redeploying to make it much harder for enemies to hit you. But just the redeployability alone in ranked, my goodness, that has got us wins so many times, just off the back of this one incredibly powerful ability. When the fight just can't be won somehow, or you notice there's going to be a third, fourth or fifth party situation, just shoot yourself away and completely reposition yourself. This one is really OP for a BR. You can either reposition early or you can wait everyone out and try and fly as late as possible. And you can decide thanks to her passive where to land safely. How do you not win ranked with these abilities? You tell me.